Hey gang, welcome back to another video. So a few years ago, I teamed up with Hollywood Haunter to recreate one of the window cornices from the Haunted Mansion for my Haunted Mansion inspired home office. Now, sadly, that project's been put on the back burner, but I recently saw a video from Hobby Halloween that reinvigorated my interest in the project. And so in this video, I'll be adding lightning to my window cornice using AI because I don't really know how to code. So let's see how it goes. A friend recently told me about using AI-powered platform DeepSeek to write code for his Arduino electronics projects. And since I don't really know how to write code, I thought it was worth a shot. So I started with some basics. I knew what kind of microcontroller I had, and I knew what kind of lights. I also knew that I wanted a random lightning effect. So that's what I asked for. Within a few seconds, I was given some code along with an explanation of what the code was actually doing as well as notes about what to change if I wanted to modify the effect on my own. Now for someone like me, this is a great way to bridge the learning gap, since I'm likely to want to make small changes, but knowing the how and where will make the process feel a lot less challenging and hopefully gets me to a result faster. I copied and pasted the code into the Arduino application and made a few small changes, like how many pixels were in my NeoPixel strip, how long of a delay between lightning flashes, as well as the number of flashes within a strike. Thankfully, the code had comments next to each editable function, which made it easier to figure out. All I needed to do now was connect it to my controller and upload the files. But before I do that, let's take a quick look at how to wire this up. On the left is my microcontroller. It's an ESP32 module, which is very similar to an Arduino or Raspberry Pi. And on the right is my LED NeoPixel strip. Now, based on the code, I need to connect the 5 volt pin and ground from the controller to the 5 volt and ground on the strip. This is sufficient to turn the LEDs on and off. Then I need to connect the number 18 data pin to the DI or data in tab on the strip. And that's it. Wiring is complete, at least on paper. Now let's test it out in the real world. I've plugged my controller into a breadboard, which mimics a circuit board and is used for prototyping. The way this breadboard works is that the rails on the outside with the red and blue stripes are for positive and ground wires and are connected in parallel. That means that if you plug into them at any point, it will provide either positive or ground to all the other ports. This is the same for the holes in the middle section, but their connection runs perpendicular. Now I know this may sound confusing, but it'll make a bit more sense once I start wiring it all up. I'll start by connecting a jumper wire next to the 5 volt pin on my controller and the opposite end of the jumper wire to the positive side of the power rail, followed by the ground wire. Then I can plug in the positive and ground wires from my NeoPixel strip into the positive and ground paths of the power rail. The last thing to do in this wiring is to plug in the data pin wire of my NeoPixel strip next to data pin 18 on the breadboard. And that's it. Now I just need to plug in the USB power and we'll see how it looks. And just like that, I've got my lightning effect. Now I could leave it as is or go back into the code and make more adjustments, but for now, I think this is perfect and I can get to turning it into a more permanent circuit. This is a printed circuit board or PCB, which I've set the microcontroller into. It works the same way as the breadboard, but it's for permanent installation by soldering all of your connections in place. Now, because I'm only using three pins on the controller, I'm only going to solder in those three. Should I decide to add more functionality in the future, I can make those connections at a later date. The key to a good solder joint is to add a bit of solder to the tip of your iron to help with heat conductivity before pressing it against the part you want the solder to melt onto. In this case, I'm applying heat to the pin and when I touch the solder wire to it, it will get wicked into the hole on the circuit board. Trying to smear or drip the solder onto the circuit board will give you an unreliable connection, which may work, but just isn't ideal. You'll also want to limit the amount of time the iron is touching the pins, since too much heat can damage the microcontroller. If you're doing it right, it should happen within a few seconds. Once my 5 volt and ground pins are connected to the board, I'll need to bridge them out to the power rails. So I cut myself two short pieces of solid core wire and soldered those connections to the board.
With that squared away, I applied a bit of solder to tin the braided wires from the LED strip, which makes them easier to thread through the circuit board, and then I can solder them in place to finish up the wiring part of this project. Because the light will be part of the cornice, I needed a simple way to keep the lights in place and to diffuse them, and I happened to find this diffusion channel that's used for under cabinet lighting. It's a perfect solution for this build, and much to my surprise comes in 3 foot lengths, which is the same length as my LED NeoPixel strip. So I peeled the backing from the mounting tape on my light strip and attached it to the metal track. Next up, I grabbed the diffusion cover and snapped it into the channel that runs the edge of the track, and then I could set it aside while I install the mounts to the cornice. Once they were screwed in, I dropped the light bar into the clips, and I was in the home stretch of this project. At this point, I thought I had a small project box to hold the controller, but what I had was the wrong size. So I popped into Fusion 360 and modeled one up to the exact specifications of my controller. I started by creating a center rectangle with the dimensions of the circuit board, and then selected that rectangle and offset it by 8 millimeters. This would allow me to use magnets instead of screws to hold the lid in place. Then I selected my sketch and extruded it 4mm to create the bottom of the box, followed by selecting the offset edge and extruding it 20mm to fit all of my wiring. This would become the bottom of my box. After that, I created small insets the size of my magnets and placed them at all four corners, making sure to add 0.25mm tolerances so that everything would fit during assembly. To make the lid, I grabbed the face of my lower box and extruded it 4mm and chose to turn it into a new body. Then I could partially fill the openings in the lid, being sure that the recesses on the underside would still fit my magnets, and then deleting the inside edge of the lid to close it all up. Since my power cord and the wire leads to the LED strip will need a way out of the box, I drew a new sketch on the lower box and extruded it to create a hole that was large enough to pass everything through, and then created some mounting feet with holes for screws to complete the box and it's ready to be 3D printed. Now that my box is finished I can get to gluing in the magnets with a bit of CA glue and accelerator spray to help them set up quickly, making sure to install them with the correct polarity. The last thing to do is to set the box in place. I realized that the best location for the box was against the outer face of the cornice, and I didn't want to risk having a screw leave a bump in the wood that I'd be able to see. So I lined the back of the box with some high bond tape, and after peeling off the backing, could press it into position, and this project was done. Now considering I don't fully understand coding and I classify my electronics experience as just enough to be dangerous, this process made it feel a lot less overwhelming and gave me a good jumping off point to expand my knowledge rather than just giving me the answer. So if you have a project that you think might benefit from something like this, I definitely consider it. That's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something.